The FBI may be letting Hillary off the hook once again over her email mess, but will voters do the same? Here to debate, Democratic strategist Chuck Rocha and Kristen Tate, columnist from TheHill.com. Thank you both for joining us this morning. So lots to talk about yet again. Let's go through the timeline here. As Mike was just discussing back in July, uh, Comey announced that uh, Clinton would not be prosecuted because of these emails. Then in October, October 28th, he announced, well, we found some more. So we're going to investigate again. And then just yesterday said, nope, you know what? Going back to our original decision back in July, we're not going to prosecute her. But will voters say, okay, it's over and done with? Kristen? I think all that this is really going to do is mobilize Trump's base. Trump supporters are really livid about Comey's latest announcement. They cannot wait to go vote because at this point they feel that preventing Hillary from getting into the White House is the only chance at delivering justice. And meanwhile, Hillary is dealing with a big lack of enthusiasm among her own base. You know, only 43% of Hillary supporters say they are very enthusiastic, and they're not enthusiastic because they don't trust her. Hillary is dealing with a big trustworthiness problem. 60% of voters feel that she is corrupt and engaged in pay-to-play politics when she was Secretary of State. And Trump leads Hillary in trustworthiness by eight points. So this is all going to come down to turnout. And if enthusiasm says anything, Trump will have high turnout. That's where Hillary is going to run into problems. Yeah, and, and Chuck, all of this mess back and forth with James Comey and the FBI, is this just adding to the issues in terms of her trustworthiness? Yeah, it could be, but they're not going to talk about that because all the early voting is over now. And Kristen brings up a great point, and it is all about motivating your base because now here we are, a day before the election. We call it door hanger Monday in the profession we're in because nobody can vote. So what you do is you walk door to door, you put a door hanger on every one of your supporters' houses to make a plan to go vote tomorrow. And how you mobilize that base or gin up that base, or you talk pro about Comey or con about Comey, but you'll see the campaigns just focusing on their core, let's rise above. It. Let's get out and vote. And that's what's going to happen all across the country in these battleground states. Mm -hmm. And I think that the email stuff was kind of baked in or stirred into an ugly stew, if you ask me. <laughs> and I think that we've got to actually turn out the vote if it's going to happen on the day before the election. Yeah, ugly stew. We haven't had breakfast yet. I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> so Donald Trump could actually still win it all, though. The new blue states that are now in play just hours before the election. Take a look at this uh, Fox News electoral store, uh, scorecard so far. We can take a look at Clinton, the numbers that she has there, and then compare that to Trump, and then you have 63 in play. Uh, so, Kristen, it really is doable. It is. I think this is all really going to come down to Florida and North Carolina for Trump. That's where he's got to focus. Also, Pennsylvania mm -hmm. is doable for him now if you look at the polls. But again, all about voter turnout. Let's think about the groups that Hillary really needs to rely on to actually go vote. Young people, millennials, as well as minorities. Mm -hmm. But Hillary Clinton is no Barack Obama. You know, let's take millennials, for example. Why did they turn out in record numbers for Obama? Because they saw him as an authentic candidate who truly represents hope and change. Yeah. Hillary Clinton is really the opposite of that. They see her as an entrenched candidate who just represents more of the same. You know, these millennials were all former Bernie Sanders supporters, but three out of four former Sanders supporters think that she got this nomination yeah. unfairly. So will she be able to get to them to the polls? I don't think yeah. she'll be, do as well as Obama Some did. Some of those uh, WikiLeaks that have been released not <laughs> benefiting her in terms exactly. of Bernie Sanders supporters either. It's also, uh, Chuck, uh, finally the African-American vote, not um, getting out as much this time around, but doing a little bit better with the Hispanic vote for Hillary Clinton. Tonight, well, today we're going to put together the Ro Rocha War Room for tomorrow. Pay attention to the Latino vote in Florida and in North Carolina. In North Carolina, 147,000 new Latinos registered to vote there over the last year. And in Orlando, Florida, 39% of the new Latino voters that have voted and early voted are new voters. These are not polling numbers. These are actual voters. So that's what we're paying attention to to kind of get some determination on where this thing is developing for tomorrow. It's going to be an exciting night. Boy, it is. I can't believe we're almost done. <laughs> but something else will happen, guaranteed. All right, thank you both for joining us, Kristen Chuck, and we'll see what happens.